Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital with your final check-in of the week. Today is July 27th and it's about 7.30 New York time. So we had loads of economic data today and we're going to be getting loads of economic data tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to get the, the employment cost index. This is a very important index. The Fed monitors very closely. And then of course we're going to be getting the core numbers, which really at this point matter much more than the headline numbers. So the core month-over-month -month numbers we're looking for 0.2% down from last month's reading of 0 0.3 and year over year we're looking for 4.2 versus last month's reading of 4.6. Also I'll point out that this U University of Michigan number 5 to 10 year inflation outlook very important number as well. The preliminary number in July which comes in the middle of the month was 3.1 percent estimates are for it to go back to 3.0 percent. It's a very important reading because if you get another 3.1 number probably not a big deal but if you were to get a number that were to be slightly higher than 3.1 if you were to get a number higher than 3.1 that would be a big deal because we haven't had a reading above 3.1 percent this entire time so anything above 3.1 percent would probably catch the fed's attention and something that they would probably uh, be a little bit concerned about given that these inflation expectations which have not gone above 3.1 percent this entire time are now suddenly going above 3.1 percent Again, this number is also sort of correlated with prices in gasoline because these are things that people see on a regular basis, as well as things like food. So this is something to be mindful of and just to watch because obviously if this number comes in higher than 3.1 for some reason, again, just letting you know that it could result in rates, uh, you know, sort of seeing some volatility. Today was a volatile day of trading in the S&P. You can see we started the day higher, finished, you know, Below, you know, we basically sold off all afternoon uh, following a very weak auction at one o'clock for the seven year treasury. And then, of course, a little bit later in the day, we received word for that the um, BOJ uh, may consider adjusting its yield curve control policies at today's meeting. Um, and that sent the markets lower because the yen strengthened materially. So if you're a bull um, at this point, the, it, this looks like a really difficult situation to be in because number one, we gapped higher. It almost looks like an exhaustion gap. Then we were proceeded to sell off all day. And not only did we sell off all day, but we finished below all the lows of the last three days. And that could be viewed as a sign of, uh, of support breaking. So you can see here that the low on the 24th was 450, 45.41, today's low, 45.28, the low on even Friday, 45.35, again, 45.28. So you'd have to go back to Thursday, July 20th, a full week, 45.27.56, and we barely, uh, just barely missed that. So um, this was a very weak day uh, in the market given that change. Now, there's a couple of things to point out here. Again, number one, we closed below all these prior lows, very, ne very negative. Number two, this is a, a bearish engulfing pattern. Not only is it bearish engulfing for yesterday, it's also for the day before and the day before that. Number two or three, you can call this a reversal top with, uh, again, moving above all the prior highs and then closing below all the prior lows. So this is overall just a very, very negative pattern. Um, now, clearly, you need follow through tomorrow for this to actually mean anything. Um, and ideally, if you're a bear, you want to see a very sharp gap down uh, below these levels and then just continued selling. And then you can start thinking about breaking 4,500 and starting to fill some of these gaps down to 4,435. Um, the bulls have a much harder task ahead of them. But given the way this market is functioning more recently, anything is certainly possible. Um, this is a very this is just a straight line, you know, sell off into the close. What the bulls need here, uh, most importantly, is if they actually want to try to maintain momentum and make all of today's pain go away, is they need to basically get this market to gap higher and then take out this high very quickly. Um, if you can do that, which is a, a pretty tall order at this point, if you can do that, then I think the bulls can save the rally that we've seen more recently and this rally can resume higher and you could probably take out this high at 46, 6, 4606. Um, to do this, it's probably going to be difficult. But again, if the bulls want to try to make an attempt at this, 
you need to see it rally, you need to see a gap higher, you need to see this taken out fairly quickly. Otherwise, uh, you're probably looking at a scenario where this may prove to be the high for some time. Um, again, when you look at the, the, the RSI here, you can see clear divergence. In fact, you know, the RSI has been trending lower uh, for a multiple uh, of days, basically since the middle of June. The other thing that we could point to and look at here when we just look at some patterns, number one, here's your, your trend line. Um, you have what appears to be as a rising wedge that clearly was broken pretty sharply today. Again, typically when you see rising wedges and they break, you typically return to the origin, which would suggest maybe longer term we're looking at dropping back to below 4,400. Certainly not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. But that's what we're looking at right now on the S&P. And of course, you can see here also 4,525 is a support level. So again, this level breaks quickly tomorrow. You're talking about the potential to start filling gaps and returning down to this origin at 4,400. Um, the bulls have a much harder task in front of them. Again, you need to really be able to take out this high fairly quickly, uh, probably within the first half an hour of the trading session for that to, for this, for this bullishness of the last couple of days and weeks to really extend higher. That's what you're looking at here if you want to challenge at least this high of 4606. The NASDAQ is also offering some more signs that suggest that there's probably some more bearishness along the way. Um, the reason being, again, you see the same pattern here. NASDAQ gaps higher, uh, basically um, gaps almost 2% higher, actually. When we look at the NDX and we look at the opening print, you can see it was up 1.71% just on the close, and it had been up more than that. So you gap open and then you basically just sell off all day long. And again, the scenario here, not as bearish as the S&P, given that you managed to close above all these prior lows. Also from, a, from another standpoint, you actually held these lows, which is important at 15,400 or so. Clearly this is a level of support. That level of support needs to hold if you want to see the NASDAQ continue to move higher. Here you can see 15,400 goes back to here. The NASDAQ attempted to fill the gap today and it didn't quite get there all the way. Um, again, we talked about this the other day with Meta. Uh, the gap could be considered partially filled or filled depending upon how you like to look at it. I usually like to see it fill to completion. Um, Meta actually did fill the gap completely today um, from, back in, um, from the gap back in here. Um, you can see that when we look at the when we look at Meta, you can see it filled that gap completely and failed. Uh, and so that's an important distinction, right? Uh, is that you didn't have that happen yet today? So it leaves open the possibility that there could be some more upside here. Again, the 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 key here is that if you're a bull, you really need to start. You need to take out this high pretty early tomorrow to get the momentum needed to probably take out this high. Otherwise, what you're looking at here is a, a situation where you have the S&P trying to make new highs and you have the NASDAQ making lower highs um, and you have them both sitting on pretty critical support levels. And that's a divergence in the marketplace. And that's something to be mindful of because you have two, more, two of the major markets, one's leading and one sort of following. In this case, the NASDAQ's been the leader this whole time. The S&P 500's been sort of being dragged along given the makeup of the index. And that's... Uh, and that's and so the 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 move lower in the Nasdaq, the failure to make a new high, is bearish in my opinion. Uh, again, this is the big level because if you break fifteen thousand, call it four hundred for rounding sakes, you know you're talking about one gap here, fifteen thousand three hundred. Then you're talking about fifteen thousand one hundred, and then you're talking more about below fifteen thousand again. So this is a big level here at fifteen thousand four hundred. It could lead to significantly lower prices. The other thing too here is that you see on the RSI again making lower highs. Also, you can see here RSI momentum broke the uptrend, tested it today, failed. So again, this is sort of a, a bearish setup here on the NASDAQ. When you look at the Dow, so the Dow, as we've talked about all week, it was due to eventually go down and that happened after 13 consecutive days hires. Um, most importantly, again, the Dow got overbought. That's come back in. When you look at the Dow, there's not much to really gather here at this point, other than the fact that you have this one big trend line off of the starting point on July 7th, and that broke.
could be a signal that the rally is over. Again, here you can see your support region in this area, 35,200. Then you're talking about lower levels again uh, here in the Dow. And, and again, if you're a bull, you know, what do you need to do? You need to really take out these highs very early in the day to keep the momentum you've had. I think the longer the all these three indexes stay within this trading range of the past day, um, the more likely it is that the sellers are going to start. I've had some really big gains. Maybe I should take some profits. Uh, that's certainly a, a, a scenario that could begin to develop. So I, I think, again, this is a very tough spot if you're bullish because you need to take out these highs, I think, relatively quickly for it to negate what happened today. I think today was a pretty bearish day in the market. You also had, you know, again, just like we talked about on the S&P, you had a, you know, a bearish engulfing day where you had a higher high, 35,645, 35,633, closed below the, the finish below this high. You did it actually for the last three days. So two days. Um, so again, this is just a bearish look. It's a bearish setup. Uh, this could be a very big re reversal turning point uh, when you look at the NDX. It doesn't have that engulfing pattern, but again, you're sitting on really key support levels here. So if you're a bull, you need to see this sort of decline today be washed off really quickly. You need to see the bulls take charge very early. You can see also here uh, we finish, we're below the 10-day exponential moving average again on the uh, NDX. So again, this is a, a pretty critical spot. You can see the S&P hit the 10-day exponential moving average and bounce right off of it. So, you know, again, you keep moving lower from here. You're going to get sell signals because you're going to be below the 10-day. You're going to be below support. So again, if you start off the day with more weakness, I think you can expect to see more weakness ensue in the days ahead. And, uh, and that's where we are at this point. Anyway, have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.